All right, friends and neighbors, time now for another networking video. Today we're going to talk about RFC 1149 IP datagram by Avian Carrier. And hey, four magic numbers. RFC 1149 with birds. So this is the standard for transmission of IP datagrams on Avian Carriers. That's the official title. And the introduction goes something like this. This memo describes an experimental method for the encapsulation of IP datagrams. Remember, we're putting datagrams into a packet or we're taking information, putting it inside an IP packet, and that goes inside a frame, and we're going to send it across the network. Uh, this is the encapsulation of IP datagrams in avian carriers. This specification is primarily useful in metropolitan area networks. Now, that makes sense. Now, avian carriers can provide high delay, low throughput, and low altitude service. The connection topology is limited to single point-to-point -point path for each carrier. So from here to there, and usually not broadcasting or multicasting. Uh, used with standard carriers, but many carriers can be used without significant interference with each other. Uh, outside of early spring. So we, this is probably not the best mechanism for getting IP data networks across a metropolitan area network when spring is in the air. And of course, this was introduced as an experimental standard. Now, one of the good things about uh, IP datagram via area or avian carriers is that many carriers are possible. And this is because the 3D ether or ether space, right? Three dimensions is available to the carriers in contrast to the 1D Ether or Ethernet used by 802.3. The carriers have an intrinsic collision avoidance system. They don't crash into each other very often. And, very important, not limited to line of sight distance. Now, connection-oriented service is available in some cities, usually based on a central hub topology. So all the avian carriers located in one place and then we, uh, we disperse from there. Now in this kind of transmission system, the IP datagram is actually printed, rolled up into a small scroll of paper, and then of course attached to the leg of the avian carrier. Now the avian, avian carrier service was unique, certainly. It was, um, shall we say, innovative in its approach, but it did not come without problems. And so RFC 2549, uh, introduces avian carrier service with quality of service. And there's lots and lots of service levels available depending on the pecking order. And there were a couple uh, that were noted in the RFC, Concord, First Class Business, and of course, Coach. And these were determined by a barcode on the avian carrier wing. Now, one major benefit of using avian carriers is that it's the only networking technology that gives you frequent flyer miles. And this one came about for in 1999, so about a decade after the original Avian Carrier RFC came out. And we can see an image from the RFC in the upper corner here uh, that is a demonstration of weighted fair queuing, where we have our Avian Carrier and then the approximate weight to balance out the scale. Now, this is not to say that Avian Carrier services, as good as it, and as innovative as it might have been, doesn't come without uh, its own issues or security problems. Uh, and so there were some alternatives. Ostriches, right? They're an alternative carrier. Uh, they have a much greater bulk capability. So, you know, think the Amazon of the day. Uh, but, of course, they were slower delivery and had to use uh, bridges in between your domains. And today we don't use a lot of bridges, right? We prefer switches, but uh, the ostriches required the, the use of the bridge. Now, round-robin queuing was not recommended because robins, while they do make for well-tuned networks, they don't support the auto-homing feature of the avian carrier that we're talking about here. Now, encapsulation can be done with saran wrappers instead of a standard wrapper, but there is the unintentional encapsulation due to the hawks in the, uh, in the area. Uh, and de-encapsulation or decapsulation can be a bit messy uh, if you're trying to get the packet back. Now, in an ode to actual networking, I thought I would also add some 
numbers that we can actually use in our networks uh, today. Now, I've, I've gotten away from uh, network protocols and network operations and explaining how things work for a little bit. We've done a series on RFCs. We've done some math stuff. So let's start to get back to some actual networking here. And to start us off, here is four magic numbers that are important to you anytime you're dealing with networking. And that is, of course, the IP address, the network mask, your gateway, and a name server or DNS. And I say that these are the four that you need because if you want to get around on your network, you could get away without a name server and you can get away without a router. But the minute you want to connect to the rest of the world, which is what we do on a regular basis, you need your gateway or your router to get off and you need a name server to resolve those names and IP addresses. And so we say that these are necessary in order to be fully functional on a network. Now these are also significant because these are the numbers that are added by a protocol or by you. Of course, we get most of these via DHCP, but if you're setting up a statically configured network, you would manually put these in there. And okay, they're not really not magic, but they're really, really important. And your understanding of those makes you a better networker. And you could argue for a MAC address being a fifth, but the reason I didn't include it is because you don't need a MAC address. Well, that's not exactly true, uh, but MAC addresses of folks on other networks are never known by you, and they will never learn yours. Now, here's a bonus magic four numbers for you. Hey, remember TCP and UDP? How about sockets? Well, for a socket, you need a source and destination IP address, and a source and destination port number. Hey, hey, four numbers. Every single client server based communication on the internet today is uniquely identified by these four numbers. And so when we talk about four numbers that are needed to get off a network or four numbers that were needed to establish a connection, those are our two sets of four. So maybe it's time to get back to packets and how things actually work. Hey, this has been a little bit of fun with RFC uh, 1149 and the Avian carriers. Let me know how those carriers work out for you. Uh, by the way, the month and the day of these particular RFCs might be significant. So I would encourage you to go out and take a look at the actual documents, these two RFCs. And hey, take a look at those four and four numbers, the connections and the sockets. Those are really important and your understanding of those is really, really important too. Hey, like and subscribe if you had a little bit of fun. And a special thanks to David Willis, who mentioned this particular RFC. And with that, may those packets always reach their destinations, no matter what kind of carrier you're using.